All right, let's talk about how to put in a temporary dialysis catheter into the internal jugular vein. Well, the first thing you need is a dialysis catheter, and most of these will come in a kit. And the kit will have the catheter as well as all the equipment to place it, the guide wire and those types of things, a dilator. Now, some of these will have two ports and some of them will have three. A dialysis catheter normally just has two. A trialysis catheter will have two ports for the dialysis and then a third port that you can use for IV fluids if you need them. The next thing you need is a ultrasound setup and all the sterile drapes to make the procedure itself sterile. Now, once you're all set up, you need to numb the patient because these things are large catheters and they're particularly uncomfortable. So make sure you use a lot of lidocaine to numb them. I prefer to make an incision before I place my IV needles, but you can do it the other way around. A lot of people like to place the needle first. Placing the needle through the incision works for me, and I tend to use a catheter over the needle, not just a plain needle. This way I can slide the catheter into the vein and not have to go and <clears throat> place the needle and hold it in place. I like placing the catheter. I also like to do it longitudinally so I can see the catheter and the needle enter the vein. The other big advantage of this is once I slide the catheter off, it's a little bit more convenient to control it. Just put your thumb over it. The wire itself usually has a J-tip to it. Now, I don't use my thumb to put the wire in. I usually tend to just push the wire my, with my hand. This makes it a little bit easier to feel if the wire is misplaced and doesn't thread in easily. Once the wire is in, I always like to check its position with the ultrasound itself. So I'll put the ultrasound on. You can see it transversely. There's the wire sitting in the internal jugular vein on this patient. And then if we look at it longitudinally, you can see the same thing. It goes into the vein and stays in the vein. It doesn't go through into the artery. This is a little bit reassuring since these catheters are rather large. So you can pull either your needle or your catheter off and the same technique. Now you're going to have to put some dilators in to get the catheter in. Make sure you're able to hold the wire at the end of the dilator before you push it through. And the same thing is going to be for the catheter itself, the dialysis catheter. Sometimes there'll be more than one dilator that you'll need to put on these people. And again, if you've got them nice and numbed up, this should not be all that uncomfortable of a procedure for them. Make sure you pull the wire back far enough and that you can grip the end of the wire before you push it through into the vein itself. Once you dilate it, you will see quite a bit of blood coming out of these vessels, particularly if the patient is fluid overloaded. The dialysis catheter itself is going to have at least two ports. The wire will come out of one of the ports and the other will be just a blank port, but blood will come out of that. So what you like to do is feed the wire up through the dialysis catheter again until you can grip the end of it. And then whichever port it did not come out of, the wire did not come out of, clamp that one so that the blood doesn't come out of that while you thread it and then thread your catheter in. Again, a little bit of pressure may be needed to do this, but you are also always clamping the wire in your fingers before you do it. And then as you pull the wire out, you will see blood return, and then you can clamp that port as well. So now both of these ports are clamped. And again, take a look with your ultrasound to make sure you are in where you want to be. All right, now both of these have had uh, fluid bled back into them, but take a syringe and make sure that you get a free return of fluid. The last thing you want to do is have difficult return because then the catheter won't work when you hook them up to dialysis. And there you see, again, free return of blood. Both ports will need to be flushed. And that's generally done with saline. Um, the normal saline flushes you would use for an IV are adequate for this. But make sure you put a little bit more fluid in there. So when I flush them, I'll flush them with a full 10 cc's uh, or thereabouts, at least 8 cc's. And then there's usually a cap that'll go on the end of it. Make sure both ports are flushed. Now, depending on your institution, some institutions will want you to flush with a heparin solution. We usually don't. Uh, at our shop, we just tend to use normal saline uh, as our flush solution. And again, flush them with at least, you know, eight cc's or so. You can put the whole 10 cc's in if you wish and then cap it. Once it's in place, you can kind of clean the patient up and then suture it in position. Usually one or two sutures will work. And the sutures are usually contained in the um, uh, kit. And there it is uh, nicely cleaned up for you. And you can see it's in good position there. And then obviously you'll need a post-procedure chest x-ray to see exactly where the catheter is. And here you can see it goes down nicely into the superior vena cava. And that's it. Your catheter is ready to go. You can dialyze your patient. Good luck.